Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birds here. Today I'm bringing you my anime review for Log Horizon Episode 5. And this episode had a crap ton of content, some of which I probably won't even be able to get to in, you know, the time frame of this review. So if I miss anything or left anything out, just let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, this anime review, we got so much. We got character development, we got new characters showcased, a bunch of humor, and, you know, in-game concepts. So this episode starts off where the last one left off with uh, Shiro in the game, pretty much picking up Sarara, bringing her back to Akiya borrow back to her um back to her guild and as they're traversing uh they're getting to know each other a bit more um you know giving each other formal introductions over the last episode because last episode they just all jumped in at once um so we're getting that they actually formally introduced to each other and we learn a few things within this um within this part of the episode during their campfire one food sucks it has sucked for a while and niantha being the badass that he is from last episode again displays how he is an effective and resourceful character with the fact that he is the savior of food <laughs> he's actually been able to you know find a way because he is a subclass of chef he is able to cook food prepare it and have it with quality flavor, texture, and all that stuff, and taste more than anything. So their food experience is going to be a lot better thanks to him. He definitely has a lot of resourcefulness with um, with being since he's been showcased, and I really hope we get to see a lot more from him especially. Uh, Akatsuki and Natsugu, throughout this entire episode and the anime so far, they've actually had like this little friendly rivalry of the fact that Natsugu has like a pervy type of demeanor, and sometimes he says things out of tone and stuff like that, and then he gets punished by, now, um, I'm sorry, he gets punished by Akatsuki whether it be like getting kneed in the face or punched or something like that. So definitely a bunch of humor in this episode. Really enjoyed that as well. And so uh, a lot of the new things that we primarily learned in this episode was the fact that one, uh, Shiro actually has, you know, experienced the game a little bit beforehand, before the uh, before the installation, with the fact that he met these two beginner, part, uh, beginner siblings, uh, starting players, um, Toya and Minori, and we find out that he actually helped them train through a new system called the teacher system, whereas a high-level player can play with a low-level player if they lower their stats to compensate and, you know, have a happy medium between between uh, all party members. So I think that was pretty cool. Um, they are actually showcased later on as well, so I'll get back to that later, but it shows that, you know, he actually added them as friends, so he actually was primarily interested and concerned and, you know, had a well, you know, wanted to look out for their well-being with showing them things in the game and showing them the ropes early on since they were pretty low level so uh, I, I enjoyed that really liked that aspect of the of the episode so far and um, further down the line at the very beginning of the episode we find out about the NPCs of the world more so um, called the uh, the people of the land and these NPCs pretty much have a role of you know every other NPC in, in any other type of MMORPG they pretty much you know are there to fill up space you know to give direction and guidance for certain players and and stuff like that. And in this in this episode, they actually are showcased a lot better than that, you know, with being, you know, a normal NPC in a game who just repeats the same thing over and over and over. These NPCs have a lot more human human like characteristics and they actually not that far different from humans when you look at it in a side by side apples to apples comparison. You know, um the the NPC that they found and you know he housed them, he had a name, he had a backstory, he owned property, he had a house, he had family, he had grandkids, he had memories and stuff stuff like that. So really like how they're making these NPCs more lifelike, more, you know, and you kind of care about them. You know, I, I was I was actually interested in him and, you know, his grandkids and the things that he was talking about. And it almost made it seem like, you know, he was a primary character, not just some filler material for, for, for the for the episode progression. So I uh, liked that as well. Um, what else? And it's like so much stuff. Like I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Oh, um, Niantha as well. Niantha was actually, um, a part of the tea party debauchery as well. Um, which is what, one of the things that I was wondering about was probably, which is why he knows Natsugo and Shiro and a little backstory. He was also at one point, a part of the cat food guild, which I thought that was really funny solely for cats only cat people only. And they would just pretty much lounge around and eat like cat food and have like you know play with, like have catnip and just sleep all day like living the life pretty much so i thought that was really funny i like started blurting i started laughing pretty much i'm like really a cat guild just for cats to just chill out so um we got that as well and that was pretty much how the episode was pretty much summed up uh, you know, everyone's traver they were traversing over the course of their traversals. They come across, you know, different, uh, different, um, different things amongst, you know, learning about each other, learning about the NPCs, you know, um, 
you know, the little backstory between Shiro and those in the in the early guilds. And the last bit of the episode was a shift. It shifts to a different aspect of the episode of, you know, this 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 party. And the party, you know, they're walking through the rain. And there's this leader of the party. He looks, he's pretty much a scumbag. Uh, I've pretty much summed him up as a scumbag. He looks pretty villainous. He's, sh- he's shrouded. You know, you can't see his face. He's wearing, like, this dark cloak. And he pretty much is pushing over the members of his party. You know, um, he's, like, forcing them to do, like, a bunch of stuff for him. And uh, later on, it shows that he actually has a ton of people within his guild a lot of low-level players who, you know, are probably new, don't know what the heck they're doing, looking for guidance, looking for a guild to join and, you know, learn the ropes. And, you know, this guy's pretty much a scumbag. He's, like, rounding them all up, and he's like, all right, give me all the items that you guys have gotten over the past few days, and I'll let you guys eat for today. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, we have another scumbag of the group. First it was Demikos last episode, and now it's this random house. So I really want to know who this dude is. Why is he taking advantage of these lower-level players and stuff like that? And what pissed me off more was the fact that amongst these lower-level players, um, Toya and Minori, the two characters that were showcased in the flashback with Shiro, the pretty much Shiro helped them out at the beginning, are within this guild. And it's obvious that, you know, through him helping them, they were confident enough to join a guild to trust this guy, and he pretty much backstabs them, and he's now using them, exploiting them for at their expense, so he can make some gain with their with their with their loot or whatever. So um, we get that too. So I'm pretty sure this is where the epi- the 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 next episode is going to traverse over, because at the end of the episode, we find out that Shiro and the gang has pretty much returned to Akihabara. They return um, Sarara to her guild, and um, that guild as well, the uh, Toya and Minori, like all those guild uh, members of that Shady Dudes guild, are in Akihabara too, and he actually gets wind that Shiro is there too. So I think they end up gonna meet. They're gonna meet in the next episode, and maybe Shiro's gonna try to get him out of the guild. He's gonna try helping them. He's gonna probably overthrow that guild and you know let them decide what they want to do with themselves because they're being treated unfairly and you know pretty much treated like scum. But that's pretty much the whole episode, guys. I don't know if I missed anything. Sorry if I rambled on. I'm trying to get better at you know wording myself and you know being more. Um, professional with these reviews or whatever but i hope you guys did enjoy this if you did please be sure to like comment and subscribe it'll really help me out and let me know how you guys felt about this episode in the comments down below i'm really enjoying this episode this anime and i want to know what happens in the next episode as well but that's all i got for you guys and i will definitely catch you next week thanks a lot guys peace